All right, so in this part of the tutorial, we're gonna actually do our first little exercise. And we're gonna go through some simple selections, water selections, modifying a couple of layers, adjustment layers, and how to actually apply changes to our selections and so on. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to open up the image that we'll be using. So I'm just gonna double click on this image and you'll notice that we have a new tab open or a new file on the top here. So I'm actually gonna close the other one and we can have multiple images open up here, which is very useful. So I'm just gonna close this one and we're gonna be using this image to play around with and use a couple of tools. But first, let's go through what hidden tools are or a little bit more about this toolbox here. So you'll notice that we have loads of different tools here or Photoshop offers us many different tools and some of them are actually, or most of them are hidden underneath groups. So if you notice here, there is a little sort of triangle in the bottom right corner of some of these tools. Now what that means is that there is a hidden tool within this group. So if I just left click, you will notice that it will open up the other tools as well. So I got my rectangular selection tool, I got my elliptical and so on. So if I use my selection tool, I can go ahead and click and drag out with the left click the selection that I want to select. But if I wanted to make a circular selection, I can just click and drag. Let's go on the elliptical marquee tool. And then now I can easily make a elliptical selection. And the same thing applies to most of these other tools. So if you click and drag, it will have some hidden tools within their group that you can use. So let's first just play around with the selection tool. I'm just gonna select my elliptical marquee tool and I want to zoom in a little bit and I wanna make a selection around the center of this flower. So the first thing that I'll try is I'm gonna click and drag out a selection, okay? So that looks about right. That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna let go. And you'll notice that we have this dotted line showing our selection. And we'll dive into what a selection is and what it allows us to do in just a second. So once we made our selection, I can actually move this around. If you notice, if I drag my mouse into the center of the selection and then use my left click, I can actually move this selection around. So that looks about right, but it's a bit too small. So I'm gonna control D to deselect. Now I'll make sure that my tool is still selected and I'll give it another go. Okay, so it's a little bit of a pain you notice to select it like this. So I'll just show you a quick shortcut that will help you out. So if I hold down Alt on my keyboard and then let's click and drag now to hold out or make a selection, you'll notice that this will actually make a selection from the mouse point. Okay, so if I this is the center, I'm gonna click and drag, you'll notice that will make a really nice selection from the center, but it's still not a perfect circle. You can notice that I can still distort this into an elliptical selection. So if I hold down a shift, it will actually limit it to be a perfect circle at the same time as dragging out a selection from the center, which is really good. Okay, so now I have my perfect circular selection. I will let go and now I can just move it around slightly, okay. So I'm gonna maybe make it a little bit smaller. So I'm just gonna hold down Shift and Alt again and drag it out to about roughly there, okay. And then move it in the place where I want it, great. Okay, so we have a selection. Now what does a selection actually helps us do? Well, basically, once we make a selection, it will lock any other part of the image. So if I pick my brush tool now by hitting B, okay, make sure that I have a color selected here. I can actually, I want to paint out here, okay? So I'm gonna left click and drag and you notice that it's not doing anything, okay? So the reason why it's not doing anything is because it's not within the selection. So now if I drag my mouse inwards, you will notice that it will only apply it to the selection I have. So this is a very useful thing. Now you notice that I also actually jumped back and I'm doing that by pressing Control alt z okay, to undo. And I can also redo by going to step forward in the edit, okay, and so on to get my selection back. All right, 
So that looks pretty good. Okay, so I got my selection. We know what selections allow us to do. So what I want to do is I want to make everything in the background black and white. So how do we do that? Why did we make a selection around that? Well, basically we can modify this selection. So instead of selecting this center, it will select everything, but not the center of the flower. And that's basically inverse in our selection. Okay, so I'm just gonna zoom out. Now I'll go up to my menu and go to select and then go to inverse. And you'll notice that now we have a dotted line all the way around the image as well. So what's basically that's telling us that look, I'm selecting everything, but not the center of this selection. So now if I use my brush to paint around, you'll notice that I can paint on everything, but not the center of our image. Okay, so I'm just going to undo that. So what I want to do is I want to play around with this and I want to make the background black and white. So what we're going to do is we'll add an adjustment layer. I'm also going to unlock my background color. You'll notice that I have a little chain here. So I'll just double click this layer. This will open up and I'll just hit OK and you'll notice that the chain disappears straight away. So this is our background layer and we're not going to dive too deep into layers just yet. Let's just add an adjustment layer, okay? So I'm gonna find my adjustments here. I'll find my hue and saturation. And let's click that and see what happens. Nothing really happens. But what you notice that we do have this weird sort of thing that's showing our selection in the layers tab, okay? Which is basically our mask. So what I want to do is I want to turn down the saturation of the background, okay? So you notice if I pull down the saturation, everything will turn black and white, but not that. And the reason for that is because of our mask here, okay? So it's telling Photoshop that, look, I want to keep that center and everything else you can modify. And that's what this layer is doing right now. So I can also change the color with this hue and saturation. If I turn back the saturation and I go to colorize, okay, I can play around with some of these settings to change the color. But for now, let's just turn on the saturation to turn it black and white. And one thing that I don't really like is you notice this hard edge around our selection. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to smoothen that out a little bit. So if I select my mask here in the layers tab, you'll notice that this will change. And here we can modify our selection. So what I want to do is I want to feather this out to smoothen out this edge slightly. So I'm gonna do is select feather and I'll click and drag. Okay, and you'll notice that I'm at around 10 pixels and that sort of edge that we had there, it's a lot smoother now, it's a lot nicer. Okay, so around there it looks a lot nicer. We can also change density, okay. And that looks about right. And I think that looks pretty good for now. And we applied some adjustments or an adjustment layer to our original image. Now because we didn't actually apply this to the image, but we added this as a new layer, I can always turn this off and we have our original image back. So we are not actually modifying the original image, we're applying a new layer on the top of it, which will apply the modifications to the image. Okay.